Why do we do house church? Well, the answer to that is both scriptural and practical. If you're like me, you've had lots of experience in the auditorium church, what I call the auditorium church. And I'm thankful for my time uh, with the Lord in that. Uh, my wife and I were about 25 years in the auditorium church in various capacities from uh, volunteers in all levels of church ministry to serving as an executive at a mega church with at that time something like 10 or 13,000 members. So we're thankful for that. And for me, I came to a point where I started seeing people uh, that had fallen through the cracks. I, I saw people who were surrounded by staff members, surrounded by church members, but confided in me that they were lonely. And, uh, and, and different things happened. In fact, I saw uh, people who just drifted away and nobody knew them. We saw people, uh, one lady in particular that, that really touched my heart was a woman who committed suicide. And she was a member of, of a church and a big church choir. And I thought, how is it that nobody knew her and that she didn't know anybody? And I began seeking the Lord, where are you moving next? How do we do church? And I started comparing scripture with the way I'd been doing church the last 25 years. And I saw that there was a huge difference between the two. And I began seeking the Lord and asking, where's your next move? And I began studying church history. And I saw that, that the church had started out in the homes as part of the synagogue system. And then as it became more Gentile, more non-Jewish, they stayed in homes uh, and celebrated the family and who they had in common in Christ. And it grew from there. And that's how they went from 120 people on the day of Pentecost uh, to saturating the Roman Empire in under 300 years. And for me, when I learned that, I realized I had taken God's word out of context. Now, as, because I speak so much, I hate being taken out of context. And yet I realized that all the apostles were doing church in the home and they were writing their letters to people doing church in the home. So when I was reading Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, when I was reading Acts and Romans and Corinthians, and Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, Thessalonians, uh, Philemon and Titus and all of that, it was all about people in homes and they were reading them in homes and the word of God had to be applied in homes. And for 25 years, I had lifted God's word out of the home context and tried to squeeze it into an auditorium. And that's why it never fit. That's why I always felt like a fish out of water. And I was in Mississauga, Ontario, outside of Toronto, Canada, about to speak one Sunday morning at a church service. And suddenly my eyes were open to the Lord's realm. And he appeared to me and he came and he stood there and he said this, see what I see, people running to and fro to this meeting and that looking for the spectacular, thinking that is supernatural, while they miss the supernatural work in their midst and even in their own hearts, for the process of discipleship is supernatural. And he's, he closed with this statement. He said this, as it was in the beginning, so it must be now. I'm moving in relationships. And that got me started on a journey over the next nine, nine plus months of doing the, the homework, the research, of what I just told you, the history of it, how church began, how, how the New Testament I had taken out of context. I couldn't believe it. To this day, I still wanna kick myself for taking it out of context because the, the, the fivefold, the gifts of the Spirit, everything about ministry was designed, written by apostles doing church in the house and writing to people doing church in the house. And so by October of that year, I had concluded by telling my wife, Barb, that I didn't wanna pastor a church again that if I ever did, it would be in our living room the way Paul did it. Well, three weeks later, I was in Edmonton, Alberta, and it was November 4th of 2001, and minding my own business in the worship service, getting ready to speak, and suddenly my eyes were opened to his realm and the Lord was there, and he came walking over to me. And he said, you've been doing the work of an apostle, but now I'm laying hands on you as an apostle for this task. I want you to start a house church and a house church network, and I want you to structure it in such a way to facilitate the development of church, house churches around the world. From there, our network of just like-minded people, we're not, we're not a denomination, we're just a fellowship of like-minded people who, who say, I want the genuine, I want the real. You see, because in this world, when you compare the world and the damage that it does to people with what Jesus said, we find that Matthew 25, Jesus said, this is the church he's coming back for. I was hungry, I was thirsty, I was naked, I was sick, I was a visitor, I was in prison and you fed me, clothed me, watered me, uh, took me in and visited me. See, it's a very practical oriented faith. 
And when we, we come to this world and people all around us who have their world just fall apart, they're looking for something real. And that includes Christians who've had enough of the form and the, the appearance of godliness, but they want the genuine, they want the real, they want the, the uh, reality of relationships, a, a safety net, if you will, a network of friends that they can walk through life with, a safe place uh, to, to be around for their home and their family. And so for us, I can only speak for us, rotating homes and rotating who leads as the Lord has instructed, as they did in history, is the way Church Without Walls International functions. We meet in homes because of the history of meeting in the homes. But on a personal level, it came about because I was searching the Lord. Where are you moving? What are you doing next? As we're moving into end times and, and world is, the world is falling apart, what is real? What is genuine? What would you have? And I've gone back to the roots. And I think you're watching this video because maybe you're thinking, I've got to get back to the roots too. I've got to get back to something that's real and genuine. And as I explained earlier in a previous video, the house church is based on the family. It was based on Adam and Eve and the Lord in the garden. It's a safe place. It needs to be a place of security, a place, a place of peace, a place where people leave their differences at the door to, to come into somebody's house to celebrate who they have in common. So the question is, why do we meet in, in the house? Because that's the way the apostles did it. Because that's the way it's taught in the New Testament. And that's why all around the world today, we see millions upon millions upon millions of Christians celebrating their faith through gathering with others in the home. I heard a house church leader uh, in China say this, that, he, that the, they estimate at least 200 million Chinese Christians meeting in homes. And they estimate 1 million Chinese coming to the Lord every single month and being plugged right into the homes. Why? Because it's an extension of family. It's an extension of the community. It's exceedingly simple and it's not flashy. It's not going to affirm you and tickle your flesh because you're, it's, it's, it's family, it's food, it's fellowship, it's teaching, it's prayer and worship. But why do we do church in the home? Because the context of the New Testament is church in the home. I think you have that same hunger to do things the way the apostles did, to go back to your roots, to celebrate in the home with family. And, and I hope this video has been helpful to, to help confirm some things in you and perhaps resonate within your spirit that you're on the right path.